Welcome, welcome to the fourth and final episode of our Azure DevOps pipeline where we are creating a basic pipeline and we're bringing it all the way through to production. If you don't know much about ADO, go and watch the first episode. If you want to know more about pipelines, agents, how we've set everything up, go watch that. But essentially what we have is we have this Terraform code that we want to run through a pipeline. Now the pipeline, we want it to run this in it and validate. We want it to plan it out. We want a manual validation. And then we want an apply stage. And we have created this before. Now our next step is to create this across three environments, a dev, a test, and a prod, and have one single pipeline that does all this stuff. Now you can see here that there's going to be code repetition, but it doesn't have to be because always, always remember, do not repeat yourself or don't repeat yourself, try. So here to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a template YAML of what we need for here. And we're going to call that template three times so that we don't have code duplication where we can avoid it. So without further ado, let's get into the code. So if we open up here, this is back to our pipelines. We'll click settings and we're going to change our file path to this complete pipeline YAML. And we'll click save and you can see just how streamlined this can get. So when this pops up, you see that it's actually not very long for a full pipeline. Now that's because we have the trigger, same as normal main, same pool as normal variables and we've extrapolated out the approval email. So these are the variables that are going to be used within the stages. And within the stages, we have a dev stage, we have a test stage, and we have a prod stage. Now within each of these, you can see that we're actually leveraging a Terraform template YAML. And we're going to pass in these parameters, which are the environment name, the backend name, which is dev blah, 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 test, blah, 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 prod. And then the backend key, the Azure service connection and their approval email because these could change possibly. And so this here, when we run it, we'll run this from the Terraform template YAML. So let's open that up and have a look. So if we open this up, we can see the Terraform template YAML. It's in the same directory. And we first set the parameters. So I maybe have to pull you over here so you can see me and the code. So we have the parameters, environment name, blah, 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 all looking good. And to use parameters within this template, you just do it in this means, which is dollar, color braces, or chicken lips, as some people say. Parameters, no, I don't like that one, <laughs> but parameters dot, and then whatever it's gonna be, so this here. And they're all just of type string. So. Display name for the job as initialize, and then this will be dev test or prod. And then for everyone, it's just doing the same thing as normal, which is the initialization, the plan, waiting for validation, and then the apply. The only difference here is that we use these parameters for things which could change. Everything which could be the same is going to stay the same, but Anything which could change, which is essentially just the back end and the name, will change here. So ensure before you've run this that you've run the TF backends because you want all of the backends to have been run. But anyway, if we go back to this now, you can see how clean that this code actually looks here. We're just going to click run and then run, and it will automatically start running through here. Right, so this here, this authorization issue is actually because the back end is wrong. So the Azure service connection, I'm using in tech. That was because that's what I used in the one where I practiced. But in here, if we go to project settings, then we go to service connections, you can see we're actually using Azure RM. So let's open up the pipeline again. We've got pipelines here. Open up the field one. Want to click edit. And then when that authorizes, we get hub and pulls through. We're going to update that service connection to the Azure RM. And we'll 
file date and save. Save. And then that will automatically run the pipeline. Just go here, refresh, open that up. Right, so now it's going to say this pipeline needs permission to access a resource so this can run, blah, blah, blah. This is just because it's the first time that it's run, so we'll just permit that. And then we'll let it run through the whole thing. So it does our dev plan, dev initialize, and dev apply with an external validation between each. So we've come to the pipelines here and click on environments. We can see that these three environments have been detected. Now, dev has now just finished running, so test is now next. If we refresh this, let's see. Yeah, it's not there yet, but it will be getting there in a the minute. So maybe before it gets there, let's click on test. And then we can see it was approvals and checks. If we click there, we can then click this plus icon and do a approvals check. Click next. And here we can add in the user or group. So I'm just going to add myself and then click create. <clears throat> and now this person must approve before anything gets run in that environment. So if we open this back up and refresh, let's see, I might have just missed it. No, no, but it needs permission first, so let's permit it since it's our first run. And there we go. So now this is dependent on approval before it can even start this environment uh, part of the pipeline, which is good because now you can see from here, dev is done, all good. But now we're here, we could just go and reject it now, or we could approve. But in this case, we'll just approve it. <coughs> not automatically go there. So to talk you through a little bit more of what we've done, we'll do the same for prod. So if we click on the prod environment, three dots, uh, no, sorry, not three dots, because it's been moved, approvals and checks, and then click the plus. And then here you have a variety of things you can have pertaining to this environment. But for us, what we're interested in is this, approvals, click next. And then you can add a user or a group. So this is where it's kind of leveraging the active directory. We we'll just have myself, there's no users or groups, but if this was a company, you could maybe say, oh, we have a couple of leads or we have a group, which is the lead engineers group and only they can approve to prod, something like that. Click create and then the same thing will happen again for that one. So if we come back here, once this is all done, the exact same thing will come up again for prod and then we can deploy it there. And the reason this is all working as expected is because also if we go back to the code see if it works this time yes so if we go back to the code in the complete pipeline you can see for each one it has its own back end so it is able to deploy all of its resources within its own terraform state and so what it means now is that for instance this could deploy to test and then we could just leave it there and we could test it, and then if it works, we could then approve it onto the next stage. Or say you only want to do something for dev, when it gets to that test, you could just reject it. Or you could cancel it, whatever it may be. <clears throat> and that's how simple it is to create a nice, clean, production-style pipeline. I hope this has been helpful for you. If you have anything that you want to ask, comments, questions, queries, let me know in the comments below. Any other tutorials that you're after, let me know. I am a consultant cloud engineer by trade, so this is all my kind of stuff. Misha's coming to say goodbye as well. So anyway, have a good one. Hope it helps. Take care.